Hi everyone, it's Megan with Teach Me ABA, and we are continuing to knock out task list five for the BCBA exam. Today, we're discussing task list item D4, which is the advantages of single subject research design over group designs. <laughs> The first advantage is that in single subject research designs, we can evaluate individual performance, which is what behavior analysts are all about. We are all about helping people, and we want to know how to do that on an individual level. Group designs evaluate the average performance across groups, but especially for the clients who receive ABA services, there's no such thing as an average person. So taking averages of data really doesn't help us with what we want to accomplish. Let's do a fun little history lesson. So the group designs that are used in psychology are based on statistical analyses. These analyses originated actually through agricultural studies. So way back in the day, farmers were interested in knowing how much more growth can they get if they put specific fertilizer on a specific amount of land. And they would take the averages. And when you're farming and a little bit of change makes a huge difference as far as how much money you make growing plants, then that is important. But these tiny changes and minute differences between individual humans, it doesn't work in the same way. You can't raise 10 different kids' IQs by five points and say, oh, we've built 50 points of IQ with this intervention. It doesn't work that way. What you're doing is individual differences and you've only made a five point difference, not a 50 point difference. So that's why it's important when you're looking at human behavior to evaluate things with a single subject research design by looking at the individual performance rather than average group performances. Disclaimer, I ripped that story off from my dad in a presentation he gave yesterday. Another advantage over single subject research designs is that we're showing causation, not just correlation. So like I just discussed, these statistical analyses can tell us that certain things are related, but they don't tell us why. And I'm always interested in what's causing this change, because if it's a change that I don't like, then I can do something different to make it better. And if it's a change that I do like, I can capitalize on that and make it even better. So we're looking to determine why variables change or why the behavior changes when we implement certain interventions. In the last video, I discussed repeated measurement. And so that's another advantage to single subject research designs. We can see the individual's performance change over time as a result of either implementing or not implementing an intervention. So we see that progress along the way. Whereas with group designs, you generally either have a pretest and a post test, so you don't know how quickly the behavior might change, or you're comparing uh, the behavior between two different groups of people. And so we may not even be able to rely on those results because there may be other individual factors between the experimental group and the control group. Another advantage of single subject research design is that the individual participant or the client functions as their own control. So if we're comparing performance across two different people, then we may see changes in behavior or differences in behavior that are related to things that are specific to each person. Maybe one has a higher IQ than the other, they have better verbal behavior skills, they're good at math, whatever it is, they're more athletic. Um, and so if you're comparing two different people and saying, oh, this person had this intervention and this person didn't and look how different their performance is, you're actually not getting anything out of that. We need the individual to serve as their own control so we can say, before this person had this intervention, they performed at this level. And then we implemented the intervention and it significantly changed. So I know if I implement something with one person, then we're likely to see this sort of change. Single subject research design also helps us rule out other explanations for why we might see our results. Most psychological and group research actually doesn't measure behavior. 
uh, they may use surveys or other forms of experimentation. So when we're measuring the individual behavior before intervention is implemented and after intervention is implemented and we show this repeated times, we're showing that most likely the changes that we're seeing are because of the intervention that we're implementing rather than extraneous variables that aren't controlled for in group designs. The final advantage of single subject research designs is that we're replicating the results within the same experiment. So group designs need multiple experiments, usually across different research labs, to show whether or not they're valid, and oftentimes they contradict one another. But in single subject research design, the hallmark of this is to show that repeatedly we can implement the same intervention and get the same effect. This replication helps us make sure that there's a functional relationship between our independent and our dependent variables. So when you go and talk to all your psych major friends, you can let them know that these are the reasons that single subject research design is so much better than group design. And also maybe they should go become a BCBA. Also, we're hiring, let them know. Thanks for watching. This was task list item D4. I hope it helps you study and pass that exam. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment, and share us with your friends. Thank you.